Hey, my name is Sarah, and welcome back to another episode of Talking Fast. Hey, Jacob, what's up? How are you? Uh, I'm good, Sarah. I'm good. I uh, saw you not too far ago, too far away. That was such an interesting what ev- like That makes on. it sound like we, like, <laughs> that was so uncomfortable in the sense that it makes it sound like we're, like, not real friends, and it's, like, fake friends, even though I just saw you at just friends. But you know what it was? It's because I heard you start talking in full sentences for the first time right now, and you have a little rasp. I have a rasp, and I, I need to know if, like, we, I was actually going to try and go to flop episode <laughs> to see if anyone noticed. I have no idea what it's from, and I feel like it just has to be from the alcohol consumption uh, this past weekend. It was a lot more than I intended it to be, but all good vibes, and we'll dive right into that. But what about you? What have you been drinking or eating? Maybe I should switch my Sarah, it's summertime, and I think you have something that I could be tied into this as well, because I'm, listen, grocery prices are high these days. It's tough to go into the grocery store and just see the what's listed besides some of the just mm-hmm. everyday ingredients. And basil is one of those for me. It's a summertime ingredient You're as basil, well. You want to toss basil that guy. into some pasta. You want to toss it into a drink, make a little caprese salad or something like yeah. that. I'm crazy for the caprese. You just steamrolled over me asking if you're a basil or basil person. Oh, I'm a basil guy. You were Sorry. so passionate. I, I'm passionate about it. It was, like, it it was just way, like right through the station. I'm a basil, basil guy. Not basil. I'm a basil, not basil person as well. Okay, good. And do you buy this frequently? Okay, so my friend for my birthday a few years ago got me one of those little... Is it a plant? Well, yeah, but it's like one of those like indoor (laughs) things. This is how you know I've never taken it out of the box. God bless you, Ashley. But it's like one of the... Where you can grow herbs inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she got me all these basil seeds and... I have have it you in my pl- not even planted them yet? And that's a three-year-old gift. Yeah, I've never planted it. Wow, I should. The seeds might go. Might go. I bad. mean, probably, but I've just never. Well, I have another tip it. for you then, because if you go into you the, the grocery store, sometimes you go and you go to the produce section and you think, "Oh, let me pick up some basil." And it's tough to actually find these days because I don't know what they're doing with the in these trucks, but like they must be turning on the heat instead of the cooling because it shows up rotten a lot of these times. Oh, that's So you gross. know what I did the other day? I bought a basil plant. So that you one can of the ones that just sits yeah. there. I feed it water every single day. You feed it water. Oh. Yeah. And then you just pick off what you need and you use it. And that's guess what? So nice. That plant was $8. Oh, so that's such a good deal. Cause I feel like it's like $5 for a little thing of basil. It's pretty anyways. close. Yeah. If you're talking organic stuff too. Yeah. So Damn. go out and get one. What about you? What are you re- eating or drinking this week? I mean, aside from clearly alcohol, if my voice sounds like this, um, yeah. what I've been eating. Okay. Random. I was not like a red sauce girl growing up. So I think I like for pasta. So I think I like revolted against this for a long time and did you wait you were like a white sauce yeah white really? or rosé i hated red sauce it's because i didn't like tomatoes so i didn't like the idea of anything like tomatoey which is bringing me to my point is i had so many years of my life where i was not enjoying chicken parm oh you're missing out on it speaking now, of basil let's go speaking Toss of basil, a couple on there. but now i eat chicken parm at least once a week because i love it it's oh, my that's favorite huge. so anyways i've just been eating a lot of chicken parm because i have these things at costco which is like the pre-made chicken parm because i'm lazy we got to go delicious. down to what is it rizzo's house of parm i want to go to rizzo's house like, of parm can we do a little so talking fast field trip maybe badly <laughs> jacob the, the oh my god it looks like i would drown myself in that chicken parm it looks yeah incredible. me too and shout at the bear i think when this comes out it just premiered yeah a couple of days ago I, we so. can't start <laughs> look we can't start playing the game of when this comes out and trying to do the math i have no I, I, can't, I can't even do I, I definitely dropped math as soon as i could in high school so like yeah exactly don't, exactly don't even word uh sarah what are you watching or reading this week uh reading i'm on book four finished book four of my 2024 summer reading list it's 10 books that i'm trying to get through for the summer and it's called Done and Dusted. It's not it, in the summertime, so you're speeding along here. It is the summertime. I consider summer as of like May-ish. Okay. So for like a summer reading list okay. at least. Um, but yeah, I read Done and Dusted. It was a TikTok viral book. It's done and dusted. It's, it's ever done and back dusted. You. It's going to be... The face that Sarah just made. Yeah, it's just not... Um, I try with these viral TikTok books and I'm like, look, they're mindless. They're just that's it they're mindless i i just i tried will i read the second book absolutely not look i was looking for like a real cowboy romance it wasn't giving like the longest ride by nicholas sparks which is a cowboy romance it was giving like i don't know nothing really it was even like plastic cowboy boots and it kept saying he was a cowboy but he wasn't he just owned a bar in a cowboy town so i I know a lot of cowboys then exactly so anyways i was a little disappointed i was too nice and last night when i finished i gave it three stars and i changed my rating this morning to two because i finished it so we'll give it two stars but just reads yeah just slash sarah just just reads good reads good reads good reads (laughs) yeah (laughs) not just friends we're gonna get to that later also i gotta i have to uh, uh slap myself on the wrist 
because I just chirped you for saying it's not summertime. And I think when I said basil, I said it's nice summertime ready for salad. So <laughs> it's all good. I'm a gas it's all later. Good. It's all good. It's fine. Um, what about you? What are you watching? Well, I'm assuming this one's tough. Uh, I I don't know if you know this about me because you never try to prank me. Why would you try to prank me? I'm not a prankster. It's not my vibe. G- good. Uh, it would be very easy to prank me. I'm one of the most gullible people in the world. Oh, really? Uh, I hadn't heard about this movie called Under Paris, which is new on Netflix. Uh, it's about a shark. Oh, lives in the Seine <laughs> River. I, I saw I saw a TikTok review about this. Okay, continue. My buddy on the weekend he texts me. He's, uh, we were just you know catching up in a group chat, and everyone was kind of saying what they were up to. And he was like, "Oh, I just watched this movie uh, or this documentary under Paris." He said documentary. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, like I, I could you know I have a chill afternoon. I could throw on a doc after a workout and just kind of sit around. I could I could do that for sure. I was excited for it. So I made some food. I like got Netflix set up. <laughs> got my being little, like I'm having an educational night in. Exactly. I was like, whoa, and this is gonna be really cool this is maybe maybe they release this because it's tying into like the olympics are coming up in paris and all the and sharks I started it, and i started it and i did clock on the under on the underneath it comes up with the subtitles thing like what your language is choosing and it came up with english dubbed and i was like Wait, why would they dub a documentary why wouldn't they just have subtitles so i was like ah it's kind of strange started eating my food i'm like watching this I was like, this is like a oh, it's kind of a low budget documentary and and this dramatization is is lasting quite a while uh, to start the movie. How many minutes in did you realize you were I watching think it a documentary? Was like seven. <laughs> It lasted seven. They were in the water, and I was like, "Nah, this can't nah, be it," because they would have better be. instruments. If this, is, this was an actual. And also, you haven't had someone like watching, like talking to camera. Yeah, I was like, disappointed doing though, because I was like, <sighs> "You thought there was actually sharks in the sun?" Yeah, I did. I did find out though that there could potentially. I mean, realistically, not. But it, the sun goes all the way to the English Channel, so uh, yeah. there you go. Uh, <laughs> did I watch those seven minutes and enjoy them? No. I would not recommend watching this movie. <laughs> okay, so the don't two things it. we're talking about this week, don't read or watch them. Do you have a good recommendation for what you're listening to this week? Um, I'm Look, I'm trying, every week I come on this podcast and I just say I'm listening to the Torture Post Department still. I'm trying to switch it up because Kelsey Bellarini, my other fave girly country pop yeah. girly, has been teasing new music. Um, and she just had a new song come out with Little Big Town. It's like their song. Really? But she is on it. Because Little Big this. Town, first of all, how are they old enough to do this? Little Hair- Big Town just did a Greatest Hits album. They just released one last week. I could see that. They're like a heritage moment when it comes to country no, they're, music. Okay, they? a heritage moment. They're like 10 years old. Really? Like maybe 15. Maybe 15. They got an old sounding name. Yeah, though, like they sound know? like they've been around forever, but like they have a Greatest Hits album now. And okay, they released a song, the song with Kelsey Bellarini. It's great. Little Big Town's great. Kelsey Bellarini's great. I don't remember what the song is called, but the song I is great. I had no idea. This is out. I'm going to go listen you to this. You should go listen to it. I might pause this episode and go listen go to it right, <laughs> right now. now. Everyone should do that. Everyone should back. do it. <laughs> pause, <laughs> review. What about you? What are you listening to? Okay, I've made it to the B-side cuts of Ariana Grande's album. I was The one that came out in April? Yeah, and you know, just sometimes you appreciate <laughs> the hits off the top, and I did that for the first like three, four songs I was uh-huh. obsessed with, and I threw on Bye, Ariana mm-hmm. Grande. Psh, that's a new favorite track. I think that it should be... Your song of summer? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can add a song to song to summer, but isn't I can another confirm. Song that just got, isn't the Sabrina Carpenter song that just came out also called Bye or something? Espresso? No. Please, please, please. Oh, please, please, please. Sorry. It's please, please, please. I thought it was Bye. I know my Sabrina Carpenter. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Somewhere That You Went this week? We did somewhere the same I went, thing. We, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. We did the same thing. We went to Do West Fest, which Due is West the Fest. street festival on Dundas Street West here in yes. Toronto. It was a good time. Yeah. It was, I went on Friday night. When did you go? Uh, all of Saturday. Okay. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> uh, it was a vibe. I, I went on Friday night and you just get to walk around, eat like random food. You walk around with beverages, whether it's legal or not, they don't care. The cops do not give a shit. Yeah. You just wander around and there was so much good foods. I had so many Portuguese custard tarts and I ate so many Did butter you? tarts. Oh, <gasps> what a miss on it's my part. It's little Portugal. I should have. I I should have. I didn't. It's I would have loved Portugal. to. It's little Portugal. Anyways, I bought them from like this woman that I can only describe as like it looks like she makes them in her basement, but like that's why they were so good. Did you see the TikTok that came up? Uh, it went on. It was on my feed, and it was like the woman who I can't remember what club they, but there was a DJ set up outside of the club on the street, mm-hmm. and this woman was just walking home with a bag. Oh, of with clementines, the clementines, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she yeah. started throwing. Well, my down. friend Nico also saw people doing the same thing. Like there was this like old man at like the so like my friends host this thing called like Oasis House, which is like an event. You know those people? I went to university with them. Oh, cool. So um, Oasis House. So they did Oasis on Dundas, and then there was like this like old man is like 
he's in his like 80s dancing and like that describes do west fest just due to the fact that it's like the it's little portugal you have kids getting face paint but then you have people raving outside of like a, like a random store high it was crazy everyone was just like there's djs every few meters and everyone's just like dancing and vibing it was like i said the kickoff to toronto summer is what it felt yeah. like a good street festival with good vibes i got corn on the cob which is all i cared about and that's also part of the reason why I this have is no gonna voice. sound this is gonna sound weird, but like I was vibing with someone in the washroom. <laughs> it was a really tiny washroom of this bar, and oh, we just got bar. to chat. And while people were like, you know, he was in line, people were talking about kind of dancing in the washroom. I mean, that's fun. Yeah. I mean, I I will say there was one moment we're walking down, and I turned to my friends. I go, this is when I remember we live in like a city, like a very big city. It doesn't happen other places. Like it's no, but not even just because of that, just because of the amount of people no, that were out. That's what I mean. Oh yeah, yeah. I just had this moment of like, oh right, like I run in, I run in roughly the same area, the same groups, whatever. And I had this moment of, oh shit. How I many forget. people did you run into, by the way? Like not too many I a, ran into a, a decent lot. amount but I also was there Friday night not Saturday I feel like yeah, Saturday would have been more but it, it just made me realize oh right we live in a city with like millions of people and I forgot that until I was walking the other thing I was sitting there I can't remember the name of the club because underneath the old extra burger R.I.P. Extra Burger. It was one of the best grilled cheese, one of the best chicken burgers, and smash burger in the city. And they shut down like four days before Dundas West Fest. Or Damn. Do West Fest. I did. I, did I know. I just did. did the same <laughs> thing. Ugh. It's on Dundas Street, so it's so confusing. Oh, I know. It was a good time. Shout out to uh, all the street festivals. We love a street festival. Um, something that you did. That was somewhere we went. What is something that you did? Well, Sarah, I was. I, I did this. I hosted this party, and you came to it. So I did. did. Thank you, guys. So I don't know the um, voice. It was a good time. Just Friends was a party that I started. It's house music in Toronto. We started in November with our first one. Just a little teaser, mm -hmm. a little tester to see if we want to do it. I threw it with a couple of buddies of mine. And we ran into a couple issues scheduling-wise with our venue. But we worked out a month and a half later, finally. And it was mm -hmm. this past Saturday. So it was we a great a venue DJs. choice. We were at the Drake Underground, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like a little bit smaller than the first, or a little bit more intimate, I would say, than the mm -hmm. first one that we had, which is kind of an open, like almost factory kind of space. Um, the drinks were flowing. People, people were having a good time. There was a lot of dancing. There was a pole in the room. And by the end of the night, some guy had his shirt off and was- That, and makes, was, that was, checks was, out. Was doing that uh it we're gonna bring it fun. back too we what already have plans do? for the next one one of uh the guys that i throw it with rich he is both a music producer a artist on a, of his own right and mm. a spin instructor so yeah. we're actually doing a collaboration with the aviary here in the east end where we're gonna have i don't know if we'll see if this it already happened by the time this comes out that's true that's it might true. not be but it might be who knows a week <laughs> okay now. again we can't play this game <laughs> we're doing a spin event we're gonna have a few this summer but this one that's is so coming up is gonna be essentially four spin three or four spin classes in the early morning into early afternoon and then live DJ with those rides and then just DJ day party at the brewery on the patio Whoa, outside. that's fun. I love a spin class. Exactly. Guess I'll yeah. come to the East End for that. Yeah. It was a very good event. It was very fun. I liked this venue a lot more. I felt, you're right. It felt more like intimate. Saw lots of familiar faces. Mm -hmm. Don't you forget that I asked you if you would get a matching talking fast tattoo with me and you said and yes. And I said yes. I said <laughs> so, a telephone on the left side yeah. of my neck. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm glad you didn't forget that because I will never. <laughs> Uh, it, no, it was a lot of fun. It was a really good time. Yeah, thank you guys for coming again. And something you did this week, Sarah. Um, I went to an engagement party yesterday and I accidentally announced their engagement on my Instagram story. People didn't know that they were engaged? No, they Or like, weren't. was it a surprise engagement? <laughs> I got engaged. I'm in the clear. I didn't get in trouble. I just realized myself. So like, it's Nolan's really good friends from law school. And they like literally got engaged that afternoon and then went to the engagement party right after. It's so like, we were all at the engagement party. And they did you show up know that it was like- That a... it was happening. I knew she was, like I've known for weeks that they were okay. getting engaged okay, this day. And so we get invited. We go to the after party. Everyone's taking photos of them. I just like mindlessly go, oh my God, so cute. Post a photo of them and tag them. And then I realized four hours later, oh my God, they only got engaged six hours ago. They have not they posted it to the world. <laughs> Luckily, what did, they, did they say anything? No, they didn't. I, I like. You knew. No, just like, the best part was <laughs> <laughs> Dave like liked it and was like, love this pic. Thanks. And then I replied. I was like, it, that's what made me realize. I was like, oh my God, Dave, I just like shared your engagement to the world. <laughs> Are they like online people? Not really. So I was very like lucky that okay. way that they didn't get pissed he was like he, he was like nah no worries we were just happy to get the tag <laughs> <laughs> so luckily dave and megan are so chill and it was so wonderful but like i was mortified i was like pacing around my apartment i'm like oh my god i what have i, done? I just what have i done thousands of people have already seen him did Instagram you take it down yeah yeah, I took, yeah it you down. took it down 
I took it down because I just had mad guilt and they didn't care, but I cared. And so anyways, I accidentally announced an engagement to the world at this engagement party, but it's uh, very fun. Are so, you nervous about maybe not getting the wedding invite now? No, or? no, no, no. We're all good. We're all good. I double checked <laughs> that we're all good. I, I like sewered myself. Like I brought myself forward, but that's good. A lot of people might just like try to take that news and make it about, look, them. I was a little hungover from just friends and I, my, yeah, whoa, my whoa, first whoa, whoa, thought whoa, 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 of <laughs> my first thought, no, I was just hungover in general. <laughs> so my first thought of like decision making, Making was just like not there like normally i think i would have been like oh i shouldn't post this and yeah. it just wasn't so anyways <sighs> i accidentally what exposed an engagement sorry guys Welcome back to the interview segment of Talking Fast. Sarah's laughing because this is one that I've actually taken on the intro of the segment here. Mm -hmm. Sarah, how does it feel, first of all, to be... Well, I called myself in the in the break here, second fiddle. How does it how does it feel to be second fiddle to over here? To be second fiddle? I'm loving it. It's very entertaining for me. Um, so take it away and introduce our guest because you're, well, you're already off to a hot start I kind was of ignoring her use, sitting over I, here. No, well, I was about to use the <laughs> analogy of a band because you're second fiddle. I don't know what that makes me. Maybe I'm a singer. And then we have rounding out our band here. We have Kath Smith on the podcast today. Kath, welcome. Thank you. Is she first we, fiddle? Is that how we're like? <laughs> Kath is officially first fiddle. Okay. So this is a band okay. with two fiddles and a singer. Yes. Got it. We were just talking off the top uh, or off mic. I'm excited today because we have a fellow East Ender finally yes. on the podcast. <laughs> Sarah, I'm sorry about this two against one. So if anything comes up on this episode uh, that you need like a reference po point or like something. If I don't understand the, the lore end, of yeah. the East End. Yeah, feel free to yeah. just take a break and we can enlighten you a little bit. I do spend at least one night here weekly doing this show in the East End. <laughs> so I think I... I think I can keep up, but I will ask for definitions if I need it, if you okay, guys are good. referencing things. Kath, we got introduced to each other fairly recently because yes. I actually, uh, I'll tell how people how the, the the cookie is made here. I tried to use an analogy of the sausage, but that's not, yeah, that's you. not, that's not that. me. We'll uh, that. I actually reached out to you because you're a lifestyle content creator on TikTok across different platforms. And I was reaching out to you as a manager, Correct. which actually mm -hmm. put me in touch with your current manager, who is a delight, Claire. <laughs> Shout out Claire. Shout, Shout out Claire. Claire and happy recent marriage because that happened a couple of days ago. Congrats. Yes. Uh, but it made this podcast happen. So welcome to the show. We're excited to get into it. Yes. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> First of all, we got to ask about the East End. I kicked that off off the top. You released a video semi-recently that I saw and I was just like, all of these places are actually around the corner from me. Mm. So for anyone else who is in the city, you don't have to repeat exactly what you had in the video, but if someone's coming to the East End if for a video weekend, if I'm coming weekend, to the West, East, East End, <laughs> Sarah's coming over. I almost said West. I literally went <laughs> East. I know. <laughs> what are some of the me. highlights that people should check out? Do you think? Uh, so in the video, I talk about Boxcar Social, which technically I think they have also in the West End, but they there do. is one in the East End as well. There's so many great coffee shops. You've got Mercury Espresso as well. But I also touched on one of my favorite fitness studios, which is Chi Junkie. They do yoga and Pilates. Mm -hmm. And then we also have... Oh, Hogtown Flea. So that happened. Yes. That was just this past weekend. You guys as well. both just started. I've talked about this. He's, I've talked I about swear this to God, he's talked about it 47 times. I love it. I go, it's every month. I think it's the second Sunday of every month. I think so. I think so. And yeah, they just have different vendors. You could even get like hand poked tattoos. Like they have like Ooh. everything here. And so I try one? to go. What no, I haven't. I'm, I'm building myself up. <laughs> the courage to get one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have you got one there? I haven't. I almost okay. did because my girlfriend and I went uh, maybe two or three times ago. And she was actually going to get one. And I was like, well, if you get one, I'll get one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the flash, the design that we walked in and she wanted to get because she saw it on like the, the artist's Instagram page mm -hmm. had just been given to someone else or was no longer available. Uh, so we passed on it. But it is also mm -hmm. on my on my bucket list. Yeah. And it's the coffee and clothing people who have a spot yes. up at, it's on Gerard. Gerard, East, correct. Yes. Which is, which is amazing. Um, also a great place if anyone's creating content to like go in there, mm -hmm. browse around. Mm -hmm. Amazing food, amazing cake. Yeah. You had that cake? Yes, it's so good. And they do a little pop-up. We were talking about Do West Fest in the mm -hmm. opening segment. They also do a pop-up where like they have different food vendors right yep. at the front there cooking it up. 
They had the back list. patio open this weekend too. So they had some oh, extra yeah? vendors back there as well and like couches so you can like chill. I don't know. I Actually love it. It's lounge. a little vibe. <laughs> it's also dog friendly, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Wow, I got to bring right? Brooklyn through. We, we haven't done that yet. Gotta I'll have go. to go so I can be part of this conversation yeah. <laughs> one day eventually. <laughs> so I, you also, so other than just like lifestyle content as well, um, I would say, maybe argue like the way that a lot of people would recognize you is you sharing personal experiences as mm-hmm. well. Talking about mental health and recovery, but also specifically with you and your partner, Ben, with his traumatic yes. brain injury. Yes. Do you want to give our listeners just like Cole's notes on maybe why you decided to start sharing that journey and how that came about on TikTok? Yeah, absolutely. So it was a couple of years ago and I started sharing on TikTok, honestly, through the pandemic because mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't have much else to do. I, I was stuck that. at home. I could not go into the hospital at the time when my partner Ben was in the hospital. So I started posting then. But essentially, the Coles notes of my partner's injury was in 2018, he was mugged when he was on vacation in London, England. Um, And unfortunately, I wasn't there when it happened. So I got the call actually here in Toronto Mm -hmm. and then flew out there. So he uh, ultimately sustained a severe traumatic brain injury. He Mm -hmm. had a subdural hematoma and was in critical condition. So they originally said he was most likely not going to live the night. I had to get there right away and sort of say my goodbyes. So got there, he survived the night um, and we lived there for about six weeks. Oh wow! And then he was cleared to come home. He got better. And by home, I mean, he moved to the hospital here, (laughs) like not actually home home. Just like Canada home. Correct. And then basically he got better and then he got worse and we had a very rare complication that ultimately sort of brought him back to the baseline again and then he was in hospital for four and a half years and underwent 66 reconstructive surgeries so over that course of time I obviously spent a lot of time in the hospital Mm -hmm. he was also there through the pandemic so there were months when I couldn't go in and so of course I was a little bit (laughs) stir crazy in those moments so I just sort of started sharing like silly TikTok videos Mm -hmm. you know and then over time he became more comfortable sharing his story Mm -hmm. for a long time he was nonverbal, etc so he wasn't obviously comfortable and then once he regained a lot of his functioning he was like yeah let's kind of share it online Mm -hmm. and yeah we just started answering people's questions because of course people have a lot and from there he's gotten better and now he's been home for over a year and slowly the content with everyone I feel like your lives change things progress Mm -hmm. and so it's slowly verged more onto the side of lifestyle post brain injury and life after brain injury and recovery as well as my own healing process through it all so Mm -hmm. I I guess you could say I haven't really niched down which I feel like (laughs) it's It's a a lie you don't have to do that yeah exactly (laughs) so yeah it's just been a wild ride and how has the audience reception been for that I know that you've obviously built a huge community around it but what do you see in the comments and and I guess what's been encouraging you to continue doing this throughout throughout the process yeah so people have been really incredible like our community a lot of times people are like how do you deal with the hate and uh, we're lucky we we very rarely end up on that side of tiktok we have such an encouraging community that it's it's incredible i love to see it and people love to see how far ben has come how far i've come we've both changed so much over the years so mm-hmm. to see people so engaged and involved in that growth is a really I don't know. It's it's a beautiful experience. I'm like feel very like grateful to be part of it. Um, but it is also interesting because some people are going to follow you for what they originally followed mm-hmm. you for. And Ben's not in hospital anymore. Like we're not undergoing surgery. So there are going to be some folks that are like, wait, I want the drama of it all versus yeah. Yeah. the the after is the calm, right? Yeah. So it's been a learning curve to really embrace what I want to share and what he mm-hmm. wants to share um, versus always just talking about that one thing. Well, that's what I was going to ask because like I 
I know as well, like not to that same extreme, but I understand that a lot of the time we've talked about that people tend to hold um, creators to who they were when they followed them. Yeah. So, yeah. and like you just said, like so much has changed in like the years that you've been posting. Um, is it tough to like, like whatever, like you want to sh- move on, like share your own things, like continue. And obviously this is always gonna be a part of your guys' life, but you want to be able to like move forward and like continue with your life. But then you'll always have like, comments i would assume of people being like well like what like just going back to bring mm-hmm. you to that like traumatic experience what is that like on the day-to-day that have to like you want to progress and move forward but then like there's people online that are just like no we want more of this because they yeah. see your life as content as opposed to like your actual life yeah it's it's definitely a mind game mm-hmm. at times right because so much of content creation is you want that engagement you Mm -hmm. want those views Mm -hmm. you want those followers that's your livelihood in a a large way but at the same time it's the reminder that we're all so multi-dimensional and caregiving will always be something that I advocate for but it's not something that I see as my number one identifier Mm -hmm. anymore it's a part of what I do and so I will always always advocate for brain injury and for caregiving but I also have to just follow my instinct and like follow my heart of what is authentic to me in this moment and Mm -hmm. sometimes that is talking about therapy and healing and the difficulties of grappling with everything that has occurred over the years and other days that's sharing my favorite lip gloss Mm -hmm. so like exactly (laughs) it's like just following what feels authentic to me was that always easy for you to like be vulnerable and like share who you were? Or was it just something that you like learned as part of the process? Um, I think that I've always been fairly open mm-hmm. with with it all. Um, but at the same time, it's it's interesting because when I first sort of started sharing on TikTok, I used it as like an anonymous diary because I was like, nobody on here knows me. Right. <laughs> right. Sure. And this is when I didn't really have any followers or anything that I would post on Instagram where all my friends and family exactly. were would be in my DMs like, oh, are you okay? What's going on? Like yeah. da, 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 da. Versus I could just share the weirdest parts of my brain on TikTok and nobody knows any better, right? Yeah. And then slowly over time you you have those people that reach out and they're like, oh, your story like resonated with me or your story gave me hope or this or that. Mm-hmm. And it's like those little moments of connection that you're like, I want to like continue and you get that like positive feedback in a way and it's also so freeing for yourself it's almost like letting go of that story so it's not necessarily controlling you and sharing it with other people and from there I just really believe in the power of vulnerability Mm -hmm. so as scary as it is and like I'm even on these sorts of things like I get nervous but I know that like it'll it'll hit ears that need to hear it and in the end of the day it's worth it is that something that you've had to learn i mean like speaking personally (laughs) i've had to do a lot of therapy to learn how (laughs) vulnerability is actually a way of unlocking a lot of more positive things as opposed to being something to be scared of scared of exactly yeah (laughs) but you're 100 percent right like what you just said is that through vulnerability and whether that's on tiktok or just chatting with a friend Mm -hmm. and opening up what you're going through is a way to process your emotions and, and really, you know, come to terms with whatever it is you're dealing with. Is that something that you've always in your life, even outside of content creation, have have been able to do? Or how, if not, how have you learned that? I think I've always been able to chat pretty openly and express myself, but it, it has been a learning curve where there's there's this idea where I am always more than happy to share and talk deeply about mm-hmm. how I view things or my life in general. My issue when it comes to where I go to therapy is actually like embracing those emotions. I think that mm. for me, the learning is not necessarily being vulnerable and sharing it, but like sitting in those moments myself. I'm the exact same way. Right. Like I think back to all of those years and I was a compartmentalizer for sure like I know I'm feeling scared cool yeah (laughs) next thing (laughs) it's like it's like you You you're saying it so it's almost like you're tricking your brain that like no I'm totally fine with it because I'm speaking it I'm sharing it with the world I'm saying it out loud all the time too where like I would even in even in writing therapy I would kind of write about or think about um essentially being aware of what 
my issues are mm-hmm. right now as opposed to yeah actually feeling the emotions yes. she's like i can tell it's, that there's anger here yeah. but not actually I feel like, like it's dealing like, with that i feel like it's the <laughs> facade <laughs> of like thinking that you're self-aware like i like when i started therapy i was like oh no i'm like really self-aware like i'm really in tune with my emotions when really like it was me just like you're right decompartmentalizing and like you shove it all down but you're talking about it mm-hmm. so you appear like somebody that has all figured figured out but those people actually like are like less likely to right sit with your emotions and Mm -hmm. actually just like feel it and i think there is a big misconception that those two are the same thing that they exist at the same time yeah that just because you can talk about something doesn't mean that you have like that you haven't like sat with it or like Mm -hmm. whatever it might be yeah that's so interesting i'm the exact same way i haven't heard a lot of people talk about this before that's literally i like signed up for therapy and was like I'm very self-aware. Like, I'm, I'm an open book. My quote was, I'm an open yeah. book. I talk about everything. Yeah. And then she's like, haha, I've heard that before. And she's like, but how do you feel in that moment? I'm like, ugh. What do you like, mean? Oh, I don't, I don't think mean? about that. I just keep talking. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the other thing. I'm it's supposed like, to if, feel if something. I can, if I can keep talking and explaining to you and not let you give or give you a chance to, to actually ask me another ask, question, exactly. I can just talk forever. Yeah. Has ha- Does having an audience and posting say vulnerable content on TikTok and and other platforms does that help do you become aware of of certain things that you might be feeling or or is it is it completely separate I think so because I think in a lot of those moments when I'm explaining something and I'm looking at the other person and they're like you know yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and yeah. you see the emotion on their face and I'm like oh wait this isn't a normal situation yeah. like yeah. you know but it's normal for me yeah but in those moments when I'm sharing and I'm almost like getting the feedback from other people it's like no like this is heartbreaking or mm-hmm. this is sad or this is exciting or whatever it may be it's like wait yeah it's it almost must, like they're like be. giving you permission to be like that's how exactly. you're allowed to be feeling or exactly. like could be feeling that's so interesting yeah it's it it's the like idea that just because somebody like shares something doesn't mean that it's like they've actually gone through all the motions of the emotions mm-hmm. itself through it as mm-hmm. well, which is so interesting. How do you balance um, the expectation of you being this open book with maybe, I don't know if it shifted. I know just for me for social media, it shifted. Like I don't like to share as much anymore as I did four years ago, but that expectation, like how do you deal with the expectation that you are supposed to be the person that is always vulnerable and always shares, but maybe you're right some days you don't want to or some days you just want to talk about makeup and lip gloss and go to a pilates class Mm -hmm. how have you found that balance for you like do you find it difficult has it been okay i i honestly feel like it's been okay i've been trying to just separate what's expected of me versus what Mm -hmm. i want to do and almost when i start to feel really stressed out by content creation is when I try to take a step back because Mm -hmm. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I started this as an outlet, as a way to be creative, as a way to have fun. And I want it to stay that way. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I start to feel the expectation too much, I'm like, okay, I need to reel it in, Mm -hmm. like reevaluate, kind of step back into what's important for me. And I think that helps. Yeah. To a degree, yeah. there's, of course, you're going to, you're going to feel that way. There's, there's no, hi- there's, there's no escaping it, <laughs> but it's kind of just having that moment of you're doing this for you first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Right. And so just get back into that mindset. Well, we talk about this in the podcast here and there too. And I think we even off mic, Sarah and I were chatting before this as well. It's like, sometimes you got to draw the boundaries in, in, I guess, what you're showing content wise because even some of the lighter stuff whether it's like a makeup routine or like like you said sarah like going to pilates class or something like that can be and should be probably considered part of anyone's healing journey or Mm self-care but isn't often seen as that because it's like oh well you're not giving me something dramatic or drawing the tea the tea for entertainment value which I think is maybe a lesson that some people could learn on, mm-hmm. on social media as well is that some of that stuff is actually mm-hmm. more important. And you're kind of talking about that right now, right? That like drawing the boundary between when it feels like work, it's like, that's probably not a good thing. And maybe let's do something a little bit lighter. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, that's, I think just a tip that people should take. And then there are often opportunities for then you to have a little bit more fun when you're not doing um, yeah, it doesn't feel so heavy. And mm-hmm. one thing that you have, you did recently, I can't remember which date it was, but I saw it on your TikTok, you did, speaking of Chi Junkie, 
you hosted a live event in yes. person, right? How did, yeah. can you tell us about that? That was amazing. So we wanted to give back to the community. So we basically did a donation based class at Chi Junkie in support of the Red Door Shelter, which is like a women and family shelter here. They in, do great work. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. here in the East End. Represent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, we just had folks come out. We had a really amazing slay and stretch class. And then afterwards, we had like a yogurt parfait bar. We had greenhouse juice and a bunch of different um, brands that I've worked with sent mm-hmm. some product for a goodie oh, bag. Awesome. So it's like uh, everyone got to have like a little almost like mini influencer event sort yeah. of. They all got to leave with really great products. And it was so much fun. We wa- raised. 50% more than we had originally anticipated. Amazing. So it was incredible. It was nerve wracking though, like yeah. hosting it for the first time. Is that <laughs> something, we do a little bit of that with the Talking Fast, Running Faster Run Club that we do. Yes. We've done live mm-hmm. podcasts and that kind of stuff. Is, uh, would you get into doing more live events like, kind of like that? Yeah, I would love to. I think it's such a great way to also meet the people that mm-hmm. follow you and are so engaged in your life and that you chat with over the internet and then getting to meet them in real life is so much fun and i think that we're all looking for connection in some shape Mm -hmm. or form and this allows that so absolutely i would i would love to do more of it We talk a lot about this on the show as well, and we ask anyone who comes on who is a content creator as well as holding a full-time job, where does the balance Mm. come in and how do you find it? We're we're working on that. (laughs) It's a work in in progress. Yes, yes. (laughs) Um, I basically, yeah, I work eight to four on my day job, and then I do evenings and weekends doing content creation. And I think what's kind of nice about sharing lifestyle content is often it's just being mindful of sharing what I'm doing in those moments Mm -hmm. and trying to integrate it into things that I'm already doing. Um, But we're working on the balance. It's It's tough. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever, Sarah, do you ever find yourself just, oh, I should probably go to this event because I need something to include in the vlog? I think I used to do that a lot more, I'd say a couple of years ago. Um, But to be honest, my best vlog of recent is me being sick on the couch all day. So I'm like, oh, so, and actually I get comments of people saying they missed the 2020 COVID lockdown vlogs when I wasn't doing anything but watching TV and making dinner at home. So actually when I'm like, oh, I really need like, I need something for the vlog. It's usually a night in to be honest, but I do feel it's that weird balance of like, I don't know, like feeling like you need to do things. It, it does. It comes in flows, it ebbs and flows. Like there is sometimes where I'm like, oh, if I get invited to an event that like maybe it's right after the pod and I know I'll be tired. And I don't want to necessarily go to it, but I'm like, oh, but that'll be good content. Or like if, if it's late, it's after improv, it's something. And it's like, I'm like, oh, but that'll be really good content. And then I like have to yeah. grapple with like, I'm going to yeah. be tired for work at 8 a.m. the next morning or... I'm going to try it like, or like, you know, there's the FOMO of missing the daytime yeah. events. I get that all the time. Well, I have a little FOMO of like not being able to, but that's it. Especially as the man, the manager in the room as well is like the other balance is okay. If you're also getting brand deal opportunities and this and that, it's a little bit tougher to turn those down sometimes, mm-hmm. even if you need the balance. Have you had any issues with that or, or career aspiration wise? Do you see this content creation as a long term? Where are you at with that? My outlook on it is, so like you were saying, it ebbs and flows in the sense that if deals are sort of coming in, you're like, okay, like like, as long as it like aligns with what I already am sharing, amazing. But I'm always thinking of it as like, I don't know how long it'll last. I'm the exact same way. When's the bubble going to burst? Exactly. So I'm like, while we have this opportunity, exactly. Sure. Like, absolutely. Of course, there's boundaries there. But like, at the end of the day, I don't know how long this will will last. I I hope that it does because I genuinely enjoy it. I hope that it evolves into something that really focuses a lot on advocacy is like something I'm really passionate about. Um, But yeah, I'm I've I've always been the type of person where I just let things be and just sort of trust the process. I didn't work for three years four years while Ben was in hospital so then I got into HR I have no background in HR 
Oh, I really? Went to oh, really? For health science. <laughs> no, wait. So then, how Dang. did you get into that? I literally was basically after a while. I was like, I need to go back to work. We mm-hmm. were very privileged and very lucky that we had amazing friends that did it, ran a GoFundMe for us. So I was able to pay our bills with that for for a while. But eventually, I had You're to like, go back yeah, to work. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, not just for money, but for sanity a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And at that yeah. point, Ben was verbal and could advocate for himself. So I was more so like hanging out there for the yeah. vibes. You know? so, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, I guess I should go back to work. But I need something remote because I need to be able to work from the hospital because he was still having surgeries right. and tests and like every other week. So yeah. I was like, I need something really remote. And my friend was working at this company and she's like, we have internships. Like, I'll set you up for a coffee chat. I don't know. Am I a personality hire? I don't know. Maybe. But I was like, (laughs) I basically went to this coffee chat and was like, look, I'm smart. Yeah, I'll figure it out. I can learn how to do admin work. Like, I just need something. Yeah. And ultimately did well. And they paid for me to go to school and I got like my certification. Oh, amazing. And then now I'm a full time. (laughs) I I love that though though, because I'm sure this is not just HR it's any field but there's a lot of unmotivated people so if you are motivated and like happy to be in it and happy to learn and happy to learn then they're like for sure I'm um, like of, projects sure like and then they know. can also kind of shape you into the type of person they want you to be if well, like you're learning from that and right? if you're bringing at least like you're bringing a little bit of being a personality hire in any role as well if you yeah. can bring then some vibes good. to the office exactly and, the, like, the and Zoom I chats. put on my resume caregiver I oh, put that oh, on I my love resume that. Oh, like that's three so good. half yeah. years whatever as you should and I like explained like I'm the point person between 25 doctors like I know how to like read data. I know how to interpret, like, et cetera. And I basically explained caregiving as the job that it is. Hardest job I've ever done. Exactly. So it was funny because then I met with the director at my company and she's a mom. And she was like, yes. Yes. <laughs> like, she got it. Like, she instantly was like, yes, because it is a job. It's work. Like, and I wouldn't have even we, thought about that, mm-hmm. but that makes total sense. Like that is... Well, yeah, it's not like she, it's not like she took those three years off and you weren't doing anything. Yeah. Like you were, like you just said, yeah. you're doing the hardest job yeah. that you've ever had. You had. And learning a whole other like industry slash yeah. like language, mm-hmm. let's be honest, because yeah. medical terms, everything's a different language. So I love that. That's like, have you made a video about that and how like people that are caregivers should like put that... Because you should. I haven't, you should. but I should. Because like that's, it's so interesting. I like... I think most people just assume, oh, it's a gap on my resume or it's this or that. Or like, I know people that have gone through like long-term illnesses or something like that, but mm-hmm. like they've always just put it on because like, what's the, like, yeah. what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. It is, it, it is experience. Like, right. It's like, like with any job, they're just looking for experience mm-hmm. and that's life experience. And that's like my partner. So he obviously didn't exactly. work for like five years. And so now he has this massive gap on his resume and he's like, I was healing from an injury, but during that time, he took like 26 online courses or something because yeah. he was just like, I need to be <laughs> Do something. doing something yeah. in between these surgeries and like try and stay sharp. And, you know, he was regaining his memory and like all of these things. Right. So that's what he did. And I actually went back to school and took like cognitive development and linguistics yeah. as a way to help him. Um, this was when he was nonverbal. So I mm-hmm. was like, if I can better understand how people develop language, then I can spend a couple hours with him each day, cueing him for how yeah. to relearn to talk. So like, yes, yeah. you like, and that's like it's all valuable. So I think you should definitely make a video about like that process and how like you did that because I think that for people that are it may be in situations that you had to be in or similar where they have to take a break or a gap, whether it's because like they need to raise children or this or that. Like I think you could prove that yeah, there's like skills in every life experience you have, whether it's like literally has to do with trauma or not. If someone that is listening to this podcast did not know who you were and wants to go to your page, what are they going to find? What are they going to find when they follow you? They will find, oh man, they will find someone who is sharing the beauty of life after a brain injury, the vulnerability, the healing that comes with that, but also 
just a girl just <laughs> like, a girl I love that just a girl in the east end <laughs> just a girl in the east end trying to eat good food drink good coffee and have a couple glasses of wine with her friends like I, I, I really am just just a girl I love that well thank you so much for coming on talking thank fast. you for having me uh, make sure you, go, you guys follow Kath we'll make sure we link everything off Jacob good job being first fiddle yes, first chair uh, today you know what I, I, I'm, I don't know if it's going to be an everyday thing, I don't know I Phil take I'll take you did a great job and thank you to you for listening or watching this episode of talking fast as always you can subscribe everywhere you get your favorite podcast on apple on spotify and androids whatever the other ones are you can also subscribe to us on youtube if you're not watching the video version you should because we're cute and you should watch it uh thank you so much for listening we are here every single wednesday i've been sarah that's been jacob that's been kath and we will see you next week bye